So, I said already that we have a new home, this wonderful place we call Rascals, here in, in Chicor. Um, and uh, I, I have to say, we've had a great, um, great lot of help with Rascals in getting the show set up, a huge amount of help. A lot of work has gone into getting it set up, and the guy most responsible for it is Joe Donnelly. And I asked Joe maybe he'd like to come along and say hello to you. Joe Donnelly, please. Hello. <laughs> Well, great to see you, Jerry. Great Thank to see you. you. Great to see you. Thank you very much. It really is just like the late, late show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a very hard act to follow, so <laughs> don't ask me to sing. You're not going to sing. Sorry, One sorry. second. Oh, I have to get a microphone. Sorry about that. Okay. So whatever joke you just cracked there, if you can just crack it again, please. <laughs> no, I, one joke at a time, that's it. Okay. That's good. Fresh material every time. Anyway, thanks very much for having us on. Well, right. uh, thank you. I, I, I do feel obliged to ask you a question. That I, I, yeah. I, the first question that comes into my head, which of course is, how come Rascals are such tasty beer? My God. Uh, this, I did not ask him to ask me that. <laughs> well, Jerry, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, so, uh, hang on. Oh, the sweat has written. The, hang on. Uh, we are very proud of our beer. Let's talk other generalities. Okay, other oh, generalities. Yeah. No, the beer is good. I think. I, do you like the beer? The beer is good. The beer is good. The beer is good. The beer is good. Thanks. I, I do find it very interesting that more than anywhere else I've ever had a drink, the idea that you're sitting here having a drink, yeah. knowing that it was made just over in that stainless steel pot. Yeah, I, yeah. That is the case, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. It, it, they're the fermentation tanks over to my left, and um, they are 3,500 litres and 7,000, and the two big ones are a bit more than that, I think maybe nine. But it is, it's, it's, it's great. Like we say straight from tank to tap and um, yeah, it, it is kind of cool and really interesting that the beer comes 20 feet uh, to the tap and freshness is important, I suppose, because uh, craft beer or locally brewed beer, we kind of want to move away from using the word craft beer because it's a, it's a bit off-putting for people. Maybe it's perceived as a bit pretentious, which sometimes it is. But um, beer that isn't locally produced is pasteurized and filtered. So it kind of lasts probably a lot longer and um, so freshness isn't as much of a maybe a priority i suppose you could say whereas it is for our sector it's a thing it's a badge of honor it's something you go well it's really really fresh and to be honest you'd notice if a beer is out of date much quicker with a locally produced beer than a, a macro beer like heineken or, or guinness or coors or whatever do you, know, do you know what i mean like you'd really know mm -hmm. that beer's gone off so yeah that's that is something that we pride ourselves on i mean like any like food production, like artisan food producers or anything like that. It's, yeah, th there's a certain quality that you are proud of and want people to experience and hope that they understand it's not lip service, it's not marketing jargon. Although I do come up with an awful lot of marketing jargon. <laughs> I even bore myself to death most of the time. But genuinely, you do kind of go, oh, no, they're actually really good ingredients. The malted barley is from Wexford. Uh, you know, the, the, even the food that we use in the uh, restaurant down below uh, you know, the pepperoni comes from the wooded pig in Cork and we use Gobine farmhouse chorizo and yeah, so we, we, yeah, you try and use local and, 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 you know, promote Irish producers as well, you know. Tell us what's going on here, here in Rascals uh, during the Culture Date with Dublin Date Festival. We have a really exciting event that I'm delighted that we're putting on because I can't wait to see how it goes. Um, but there's a new, there's a new thing. Uh, it's kind of, uh, well, they call it storytelling. So there's a group that have been doing it for a while um, and I think it's called Shaniha or something like that. My Irish isn't that great. But we work with a guy called Dermot from Alternative Dublin. One of his colleagues is here this evening. And um, we're putting on an event called uh, Storytime, and it's storytelling in a brewery. So it's, it's, I really like it because we are desperate storytellers in a good way. In other words, like I think we do it out of social awkwardness that we just tell someone a story. You know, at a funerals or wedding, anything. You just break into a story. Like I was in the doctor's the other day and a man came in with three legs. You know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I think we're great at that. And even if we're not great, we indulge it and tolerate people telling stories. So the format of this event, it's an open mic, but without the music. So you come along and literally just get up and tell a story. And, you know, it's brilliant because it's the opposite of the internet. Like everyone talks nonsense on the internet. But this is great because you come here you just get up and you just tell a story about something and people go, oh, that's mad or that's interesting, whatever it is, and have a drink and all the rest of it. So Alternative Dublin are an absolutely brilliant organisation to work with. They're a really great bunch of guys. They're so sincere and genuine about what they do. They do all sorts of different events. Um, Dermot is just a gentleman. All his team are really sound. I can't stress that enough. And it's going to be a great night. And that's the Wednesday. And the tickets are on, on our website and e easy to find. Um, the tickets are on Eventbrite or, or through Rascals. But that's one of the big things. He's then also doing a graffiti workshop uh, on the Sunday here as well. 
so that's that's another thing they do as well, which is you get to learn how to use spray paint, and uh, yeah, it's good. Speaking of great people and great organisations, um, you brought along some prizes. I do. I brought along a case of beer. Who wants a box of beer? Who wants a box of beer? <laughs> um, there's also uh, there's also uh, a pair of tickets. So it's a pair of tickets and a case of beer. A uh, pair of tickets to the Happy Days Festival, which takes place next weekend, the Maybank Holiday here in Rascals. It's our fourth annual Happy Days Festival. It's a beer and food festival, DJs, all the rest of it. It's really good crack. How did you, you think of that? Well, <laughs> there was just this thing that, like, what? We, we have a brewery with loads of space, and we know lots of DJs, and we have lots of food trucks, and one of our beers is called Happy Days. But no, it's, it's great. It always sells out, and um, yeah, I definitely come along. Uh, Saturday is sold out. Um, so there's just tickets left for Sunday. But it's a great weekend. It's a good crack. Have you got a question? I do, yeah. You warned me to have a really tough, difficult question. Right. Yeah. So in 1722, the <laughs> Prime Minister of Thailand... No. Um, so I kind of, it's a D8 thing. So here we go. Bear with me. But this is uh, close to my heart because my surname is Donnelly. And uh, Dan Donnelly was a famous boxer many centuries ago. I've lost everyone already. Great. <laughs> so Dan Donnelly was uh, buried. He was a boxer in the 18, 1700s. He was a legend anyway, uh, as all Donnellys are. So he was, uh, when he died, he was buried in Bully's Acre, which is down in the grounds of the Royal Hospital of Kilmainham. But back then, of course, body snatchers were a thing. Uh, and his body was dug up by body snatchers, they'd give the, they'd sell the bodies to medical people. You know this, right? Yeah. Yeah. You were involved. Your family go back. With this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so that's true. That had poor old Dan. They dug him up because he was uh, he was a bit of a freak of nature. That's why he was such a good boxer. In uh, it ended up anyway that uh, a part of his body ended up on display in a glass case in a pub in Kilcullen in Kildare for years, many many years. I'm from Kildare. <laughs> And now, eventually, they went, hang on, that's a quite a historical artifact. It's over in some museum in, uh, in America. But my question is, what part of his body? Arm. Arm. Jerry, you pick, because I haven't... I, <laughs> I think I, this lady I, here put up her hand done, first. Anyway. Done, done, done. Yeah, yeah, this we lady don't, put up her hand. We don't do fairness. She, she put we up her hand, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Am I yeah. done? I, I, I either, well, come up and take your applause, you know. Um, uh, but no, but just say there are more prizes and there's more tickets as well. Yeah. So Joe's tickets. brought along several prizes. We're going to give them out throughout the, throughout the yeah, evening. Yeah, more so. prizes to come. Stay calm. Stay calm. Yeah. Will you please put your hands together, please, for Joe Donnelly. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jerry. Cheers. Thanks a lot.